I think they might be voting right now. They're voting right now. Mr. Chairman, I rise today in strong opposition to the Hinchy Amendment. Do we need to legalize marijuana? This amendment has nothing to do with legalizing marijuana. The use of marijuana to relieve the pain of victims is well known. Marijuana is a dangerous drug that is not adequately respected by the young people of this country. Marijuana is not harmless. It dulls the brain. The people who are suffering and dying. The message we're sending to our children today. This amendment has nothing to do with this amendment. If they hadn't spent years. Marijuana is with all due respect to all of you, butt out. saying is give pot a chance let my life live in freedom we all have the right to smoke weed let my life live in freedom we all have the right to smoke weed marijuana enjoy us it's destroying our constitution the senseless endless wasteful war on drugs um what was the other point i just had Totally slipped my mind, that's terrible. One more thing I want to say right now. The new generation are stronger, smarter, wiser, and more prettier and beautiful. We need to end this culture of fear that is being perpetrated in Washington based upon the so-called war on drugs. You are in the front ranks trying to change those laws in intelligent, reasonable, progressive ways to benefit the people of America. To be an effective lobbyist, you absolutely need to believe in, in, in what you're lobbying for. I'm very fortunate in the sense that I deeply believe in the issue for which I'm advocating. Congress in 60 days will be voting on whether or not to stop arresting cancer patients and AIDS patients who use medical marijuana in states, which have allowed medical marijuana laws to pass. Okay, cool. Can you just verbally brief me really quickly what's... Uh... My goal is to get 218 votes on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives for the hinchy Rohrbacher medical marijuana amendments. Going to 236 Matt Tab. We want to pass this amendment. We're, we're not playing around. We're, we're aiming to actually legalize medical marijuana. The fact that our federal government wants to arrest people for using the medicine that works for them that their doctors have recommended that's legal under state law is an outrage. It's, it's, an, it's a moral outrage. Yeah. How are you, sir? Good. Nice to see you. Hey, um, sir, I'm curious if there's anything that would cause you to, to change your vote on the medical marijuana amendment. You voted against it last year, and I was curious if there's any chance that you would support it this year. This job is about building relationships. I'm good, how are you? How are things going? So I basically try to become their friend. Hey, good luck. take care, thanks Congressman. All right, see ya. And it's always trying to get that message out there as quickly as possible. Congresswoman Wilson? Hey, I'm Aaron Houston with the Marijuana Policy Project. I'm sorry? Aaron Houston with the Marijuana Policy Project. I was actually in your district in 2004. Uh, very good to see you. Good to see you, Congressman. That happens a lot. It's great to see you again, Congressman. What, what the There's a stigma attached to marijuana. How do you make politicians feel comfortable supporting this? How do you make them feel like they can actually come out and take a strong stand on it?
We've poured a considerable amount of resources into passing the amendment, hitting the GOP congressmen who have not supported the amendment in the past. It can be such a, um, such a, a difficult issue to convince people on congressmen. Believe it or not, there's a bunch of politicians around here in Washington. <laughs> <laughs> this town's all about, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Mm -hmm. Well, we give contributions. <laughs> we give money to, to good guys. <laughs> Congressman, you're a scholar and a gentleman. Thank you. Really One person in a suit with a short haircut, able to give PAC contributions and able to okay. intelligently talk to members of Congress and their staff members uh, is far, far more powerful than having a hundred or a thousand or even possibly tens of thousands of people on the street. I just thought I'd uh, give you a quick update on, on what we're doing. And Congressman Hinchy is the prime sponsor of the Hinchy Rohrbacher Medical Marijuana Amendment. He's in a very strongly Democratic district, uh, so he has the latitude to say some things and to, and to do things that, that possibly other members might want to do but, but can't do uh, because of the districts that they're in. And so we're going to continue to push it hard until we get it passed. And I think we do have a good chance of getting it passed this year. I think so too. The citizens of these United States have already made up their minds on medical marijuana. It's a consistent finding whether they get a chance to vote for it in a state ballot initiative or whether they're polled on it. Everybody says it's not just cruel and not just unusual, it's insane to be denying to sick people something that is of proven medical efficacy. That ought to be the end of the argument right there. The DEA does not recognize any initiative anywhere in the United States that promotes marijuana as a safe, harmless drug that can be used for medicinal purposes. The issue of medical marijuana is not something that ought to be decided by popular referendum. I'm, I'm really pleased by it. We have a whole scientific process that served this country damn well for a long, long time in determining that. You know, and, and, and you can make horrendous mistakes. There is a system, and it's basically at the Food and Drug Administration. That's where the issue of medical marijuana should be decided, and it should be decided by doctors and scientists. The reason people have not taken marijuana through this review process is because it can't pass. It won't pass. And so they want to go this other route. And, you know, good luck to them, because the science isn't there. And it's not going to be there tomorrow either. Of course marijuana has legitimate medical value. I mean, there's no question about that. Uh, the uh, FDA came out with a statement saying that marijuana's got no legitimate medical value. They were just being political and dishonest about that, and they were criticized up the gazoo. What they meant was that there were no what are called phase three final clinical trials of the sort that pharmaceutical companies have to do to get a drug finally approved. But in fact, there's oodles of evidence about the efficacy of marijuana as medicine. It is not possible that any disease would ever be treated with smoked marijuana. Smoking is an unhealthy, dangerous, destructive drug delivery system. Smoking your medicine may be an unusual way of taking your medicine, but it works, and the reason so many people do it is because it works. It's just dumb. It's medically stupid. Why are people going to do that? I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in October of 1994. So I graduated nursing school in 1992, and in 1994 I got diagnosed with MS, and in 1998 I had to leave a, uh, a profession that I loved. Anyway, so I only got six years out of it. With multiple sclerosis, they haven't figured it out what causes it, but it's an autoimmune disease, auto meaning self. So what happens is your self attacks your immune system. They don't know why.
I might have tingliness in my left hand one minute. My vision might be affected another, although that's been good lately, thank God. You know, and then my legs are hurting, which is, at this point in time, my biggest thing is, is pain and burning. I am on a lot of meds. Currently, I take the, not only the shot, the interferon, which is every other day, and I've been doing that for 11 years. I take Imuran in the morning. I take Baclofen and Neurontin both four times a day each. And I take Wellbutrin, which is an antidepressant. I take that twice a day. And uh, Detrol and Ditropan, which are urinary medications. Because I do address every symptom with my neurologist. We, we treat every symptom with pharmaceutical, and yet you don't get total relief. You know, they do work. I'm not disputing that they work, but does it work fully? No. My son learned a lot about medicinal marijuana, and so he gathered some information, and he came to me and said, Gee, Ma, you know, have you ever thought of this? I was willing to try it, give it a chance, but I didn't want to break the law. I didn't want to have to feel like a criminal, like, oh, I'm sneaking, and God forbid I get caught. Now it's legal in Rhode Island. Rhonda O'Donnell, who suffers from multiple sclerosis, became one of the first people to turn in her application to register for Rhode Island's medical marijuana program, a program that was established after the General Assembly made it legal for certified patients to use the popular drug for medicinal purposes. This is where people get the lines crossed sometimes. It's not legalizing marijuana for everybody at all, just for medical purposes with the doctor's recommendation. Right. Are you the first one in Rhode Island to get the uh, license? I think I am. The, I was the first one to apply, and I picked it up last week, yeah. so I officially right. have it. Well, that's you want to see it? Sure. sure. <laughs> One second. Okay, there, there we go. There you go. Look at this. Yeah. Now they issue it from the state. You go right to the Department of yeah. Health. <laughs> Hello. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah? Good. Oh, I can smell it from out there. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, thank you very, very much. I got a kiss, too. Thank you. Thank you. Today is uh, the first day that I'm going to try marijuana for medical purposes. Um, I have some marijuana product I had, I've actually had for a little while, and I will try it and see if it can help with my stiffness and burning and pain. It's very hard for me to see my daughter suffering and I can't do anything about it. So I'd be pleased if this helps you and, and a lot of other people. My mom is my rock. She's been a trooper. I mean, she, I don't know. You're <laughs> strong. So the whole medical marijuana movement helped transform the imagery of the marijuana user from the tie-dyed teenager, dropout, smoking a joint, to an ordinary American using this stuff as medicine. Might be your aunt or your brother, or somebody living with AIDS or multiple sclerosis or cancer. And that's why the debate, you know, I, I really think the debate is evolving and it's becoming less and less about marijuana and more and more about the symbolism of smoked marijuana, right? You know, there's something about the smoked marijuana that, that the reactionaries in political power today identify with the rebellious 60s and the uh, indifferent 70s. It's about the bigger culture war that's going on in America today and about how marijuana gets tied up in that bigger struggle. OJ, can you smoke marijuana, grass weed? And the pot head is straight. Gotta go war is late. Gave poop that is high. Through the night that our flag was still there. Who sees us at star spangled banner?
Detective Steve Reed from the San Diego County Sheriff's Department. Detective Reed has led the marijuana eradication program for the County of San Diego for several years now. And when you look at the numbers, it's pretty clear that Steve's efforts have been at or near the top of people who do this kind of work across the nation. Uh, his work has resulted in the arrests of 442 suspects, the confiscation of 454 weapons, and also the seizure of assets in excess of $11 million. Congratulations to Detective Steve Reed. Insert a fresh magazine if you need one. I'm a San Diego Sheriff's Deputy assigned to the San Diego Integrated Narcotic Task Force. It's run under the auspices of the Fire. Drug Enforcement Administration. Cam. This is a drug war, you know, so we're out there to win it. I've been running this marijuana program uh, since 1988, so we're going on 18 years. I don't, I don't know if you could ever find a job that fits me any better. I can go out and be physical and look for marijuana and be a long-haired hippie and, you know, and be a police officer. What else, what else could you ask for? Come here, Murph. Come here, Murph. Come here. Good girl. Oh, the Murfer. Hey, Pepper. Hey, Steve. hey, Tony, what's happening? Gonna do one of our normal e yep. flights today? Yeah, go fly a couple bags, whatever he takes. section of San Diego County, see if anything's popped up. The plants are starting to get bigger, start to reveal themselves, We're starting to see them coming up underneath the brush and stuff. I'm the marijuana spotter for the county. I just have the ability to be able to see marijuana from the air. Oh, look at the brown stuff down low. I have a vision or color problem that my greens are probably stronger than most people's. Slow down your turn, slow down your turn. If I go outside and look, then I'll see 50 shades of green, where if I talk to somebody else, they say five or 10. So I think that's assisted me in being able to see the different shades of green while we're flying over to determine you know, whether it's marijuana or, or some other type of just natural vegetation. It's about 10 miles south of here. It's all out our door now. It's all about 50 yards up the creek bottom. It's all salt and peppers right there below us. Yeah, I got it. You can see right it. here? Yeah. It's a lot of dope. A lot of wheat down there. A ton of it down there. I just happened to look out the uh, right side of the helicopter down the drainage and the plants just all popped up. Perfect time. Sun was hitting them. They were all sparkling. All right, that's our uh, gold mine for the day. Hey, Tony, keep coming. Right on. Okay, let's get out of here. There's always a chance that uh, there's the gardeners going to be there, the cultivators. Um, it's a big garden. It's going to be worth a lot of money. They could be protecting it. Get everybody there approximately 545. That should get us in there just about sunup. Be moving it by 6. Hey, we'll do that tomorrow. That's the best garden I've seen this summer. Steve Reed is an individual that truly believes and what he's doing. He believes, and I'm convinced, and I know, that Steve Reed makes a difference. A person does not essentially wrap themselves around a cause and have as much zeal 
as a Steve Reed without being absolutely sure in their mind, in their heart, that they are serving a higher, a higher mission, a higher cause for the benefit of society. And that's exactly what he does. The war on drugs is the last dying smell from the Nixon administration. This isn't a war, it's a misuse of the word. It's an apparatus of control. You can tell it all, by the way, by the name they give to the person who's in charge of this mad scheme, a czar. The whole point of the United States is no bloody czar. No monarch of any kind. And I'm proud to nominate John P. Walters, where he will serve as a valuable member of my cabinet. But the czar is exactly the right name for this program and for this mentality. When we push back, the drug problem gets smaller. It's absolutist, it's unquestionable, it's fanatical, and it's corrupt. What keeps this thing going is the government, especially the federal government and organizations like the Partnership for Drug-Free America, their willingness to spend hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, taxpayer dollars oftentimes, on propaganda putting out propaganda in every case that's essentially an ounce of truth embedded in a pound of lies and bull and exaggeration. Wanna get high? No way, man. That stuff's for losers. The creation of the media campaign was an enormous achievement in, in our office. Oh, the legalizers were livid. You can't fight drugs by TV. Guess what? Everybody advertises on TV, whether it's Coca-Cola to political campaigns to the value of being drug free and the dangers of using drugs like marijuana. Man, watch out! And, and it worked. We had some very effective ads. There was a 13% reduced proclivity of people to, of kids to use drugs when they saw the ad that had the actor smashing the dishes. We had another very good ad that had um, my mommy talks to me about everything. This is a little girl. And she talks to me about this and that and this and that. And what does your mother say to you about drugs? Dead silence. Those are my two favorite ads that I thought were enormously powerful. This absurd uh, uh, continuation of this prohibition is largely a function of ignorance. In 1967, because I was so concerned about this drug marijuana, I decided to do a review of the literature. I was then persuaded by Harvard University Press to do a book. The book came out in 1971, Marijuana Reconsidered. I learned that uh, what was being said about this drug was, uh, was mythological. You couldn't find the data to really support it. It turns out that marijuana came across as a remarkably non-toxic drug. Cannabis is a plant. Now, in the plant, there are somewhat more than 60 molecules called cannabinoids. THC is the most active. THC stands for tetrahydrocannabinol. People find smoking marijuana very useful for a whole host of symptoms. And if you inhale it, you get the effect within a very short period of time. So you can titrate it. By titrate it, I mean uh, you can take just enough to get rid of your symptoms and stop. The government hates to admit that they've already acknowledged that marijuana is a medicine. They acknowledged it in the 1970s and 80s when they allowed dozens of Americans to receive a monthly supply of marijuana from the government's marijuana farm at the University of Mississippi. Some of those people are still alive and still obtaining it today, their can monthly canister of marijuana. Now, here's where I keep my cannabis. Keep it refrigerated, it stays fresher. I receive one tin of 300 pre-rolled cigarettes, approximately 300 cigarettes, every 25 days from the federal government. And here it's hermetically sealed with wax to try to keep the freshness and the strength up. This marijuana was actually grown right here in 
April of 1996. So it's been packaged and frozen since then. And then you open it up. Okay, inside you'll see that there's approximately 300 rolled cigarettes to this tin. and sold by a cigarette machine. What this can means to me is for the next 25 days, I don't have to worry about medicine. That I know that I'll be as well as I possibly can be. And that I don't have to worry about if somebody's going to bust my door down and come arrest me because of this medicine. The disorders that I suffer from are multiple congenital cartilaginous exostosis and a variant of the syndrome pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidism. In lay terms, what it means is bone tumors that grow outwardly from the long bones such as this grow outwardly into the muscles and the veins, stretching the muscles and the veins, making it very painful. But more important, any kind of movement can tear the muscle or tear the vein, and I could hemorrhage and a clock could break off, go to my heart, my brain, my lungs, I'm dead. I usually try to get in, if I can, 10 to 12 marijuana cigarettes per day. What the cannabis definitely does is relax the muscles going over these tumors. Thereby, I can move and, and not have to worry about tearing anything. So I'm ready to go to work and, and I try to make some money for myself and my clients. More important for my clients. Uh, when people see me taking my medicine, they don't understand that it's medicine, and they think all I'm trying to do is get high, and that, and that I've got you know some kind of balls to be able to do it, do it in public. Of course, I try to explain to them right away that it's medical use provided by the federal government, and I'm sure most people just kind of laugh and go, "Yeah, right." I became the second person in the United States to receive medical cannabis from the federal government. Robert Randall is the first patient. We welcome to Larry King Live, Bob Randall, the first American ever to gain legal access to marijuana because of his glaucoma condition. Why are you allowed to use these, Robert? I have a disease called glaucoma, and marijuana at this point is the only drug that will help prolong my sight. You could smoke it now legally, couldn't you? Sure. Do it for me. Okay. Yes. This is a first. I want yeah, you to know, Larry. <laughs> I spent 27 years with Bob Randall, and 25 of those years he was using 10 marijuana cigarettes a day, federally supplied. And I can assure you he was not a stoner. Um, he had a terrific memory. He was extremely articulate. He was highly motivated when it came to, particularly to this issue. I think the only thing surprising here is that a small group of unelected bureaucrats have so long resisted making marijuana medically available. Essentially, it comes down to almost a theologic argument. They want to pretend that marijuana is simply evil, and I think we have to be more rational than that. We have to realize that marijuana has good and bad uses. Bob was treated on every conventional medication that was available, and it was only through the addition of marijuana that his eye pressure was lowered to within the safe range. Told at 25 that he would be blind by the time he was 30, marijuana made the critical difference, and Bob could see up until the time of his death in 2001. We were arrested in August of 1975 for growing four marijuana plants on our sun deck in Washington, D.C. And once Robert found out that the federal government was already conducting research, on marijuana as a possible glaucoma treatment, that made him very angry. He could not reconcile in his mind that we were being called criminals for what the federal government was already well aware of. So we went to trial in July of 1976, and the lawyers pleaded that Robert needed medical access to marijuana based on his medical need. Uh, the trial was held before Judge James Washington in Washington, D.C., and he found Robert not guilty of marijuana possession by reason of medical necessity. It established within the legal framework the concept of medical necessity. And by 1991, we had 13 individuals who were receiving uh, marijuana legally for the purposes of, of medical application. 
George Bush Sr., who was running for re-election, didn't want to look like he was soft on drugs, and so he decided to close down the program so nobody else could get on it. He grandfathered the 13 of us in so we didn't sue the government. It's ironic when you've got something legal that everyone else could be arrested for. That's what's so bad about this fight, is that people that are sick that need the medicine aren't getting it. They're being made criminals, they're having their life in turmoil, especially if they're arrested. And it's just not right. Marijuana is, it, it elicits too many emotions in people. And probably if it, if it were called something else, it would be a, it would be a much better world. I, I used to say that if, if a scientist went into a, a, an Amazon rainforest and came out with this new plant that had never been discovered before, uh, that he, he called cannabis and gave it to other scientists and researched it, it would be hailed as, as a, a savior because it has so many wondrous, uh, wondrous properties. And it would be nice if it didn't have all of the bad baggage that marijuana has if it were just simply cannabis. Uh, that would be a, a better world, I think. Good morning, your British securities. Just a moment. All right, we're back. I'm a stockbroker. I'm a professional person. I handle a lot of money on a daily basis. A prison pill. I, you know, I'm a good, productive member of society. I pay lots of taxes, and I'm able to do that because I use marijuana. Yeah, I'm calling about that option we talked about. Did the check come in from Whiting today? What I like about this is the diversification. Cannabis doesn't impair my ability to think, to act, to move, to do anything I need to do. If anything, I think it sharpens my decision making, especially at work, because now I'm not concentrating on my pain. Hold on one quick second. Rev. Rosenfeld? Yeah. I'll, I'll. All right, I'll go ahead and take care of it. All right, bye-bye. I've got to be sharp. I've got to handle millions of dollars on a daily basis. And to do that, I need to smoke my cannabis. Everyone, yes. I want to propose a little toast and just thank you for all my family and for being here and have a great meal. Yeah, yeah. And thanks again. Right. Take care. Yeah, yeah. I know how beneficial it is. I know how well I am doing. I know how bad I was without the marijuana. And so I'm just so fortunate to have the medicine that I can get up and go to work every day. I can provide a living for my family. I can do all that because I have this medicine. All this is, is a weed that was put on this earth and it's beneficial. It has been through centuries. I'll let the states do what they can. And the federal government's given them no choice. And that's what's gotta be changed. It's gotta be based on a federal level. I, I feel like we will make history if we pass the Hinchy Robacher Medical Marijuana Amendment to the SSJC bill. If we pass that amendment, our names will go down in history, guaranteed. How are things going? Very well. We just got the endorsement of the American Nurses Association California. Yes. Right. Nice. nice. It's going extraordinarily well. I don't want to speak too soon and jinx myself, but I feel like we are at the tipping point here this year. And I talked to Ross, too. Ross is important because he's the chair of the Blue Dog Democrats, so he, he would be important to get. Welcome to the morning show. Aaron Houston, who's Director of Government Relations for the Marijuana Policy Project, um, is joining us along with Dr. Eric Vogue, um, Chairman of the Institute of Global Drug Policy, Drug Free America. Medical marijuana is a drug that works for certain patients, and that's why we have the Hinchy Rohrbacher Amendment. The real central part of this is this is incremental legalization of pot. The Marijuana Policy Project is out to legalize pot. I mean, talk to these guys at MPP. How many years have they smoked pot? Well, that is just outrageous, sir. I, I resent that, and that, that is, that is a, a ridiculous ad hominem attack. I think the bigger picture is, you know, who is pushing this whole marijuana issue? Who's pushing this? And if you look at MPP, look at their funding. It's George Soros. It's many of the pro-legalization campaign. It's not with medical marijuana. It's with legalizing marijuana. I would ask you two questions. Number one, would you tell that cancer patient who's vomiting uh, that, they, that they can't use a medicine that works for them that's been recommended by their doctor? And also, sir, 
Should they be in jail? Should those cancer patients be locked up? They are not going to jail. I don't. I no, mean, no. It's ridiculous. You're arguing that they should be in. That you're arguing that they should be criminalized. Are, are you saying that they should be in jail? What I'm saying is the people that provide it to them should be certainly. I think that if somebody but, wants. But that's not the law, sir. Doctor, should your cancer patients go to jail? My cancer patients don't go to jail. My well, I guess they're lucky that they it, shouldn't go to jail, and they aren't going to jail. And I think, and unfortunately, I have to start seeing patients in about 30 seconds here, because I really would like to stay on and do. Oh, Lord. I just got disconnected. Fuck. I live in a state that has no medical marijuana protection. I was... I'm, I'm born with um, cerebral um, um, palsy, which uh, most noticeably manifests itself in a um, in a severe uh, daughter and uh, the right side of my body is much um, noticeably weaker than my uh, left I have a a the stutter has got to be one of the most stigmatizing disabilities invented by God. A Photoshop printer. It won't turn on. I was made fun of through elementary school, through middle school, through high school. I got my nose fractured because I went to slap a guy who made fun of me. I tried calling you before and I get um, hung up on. Um, hello? It's very humiliating. My right arm is always very painfully tense. I went through my entire childhood in pain because I um, couldn't move my muscles. Yes, I I am a widowed young mother with um, four children. Tristan is nine. Jade is six. Ulysses is four, and Fiona's um, two. They're amazing, and I want. I, 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 I want them to know how amazing they are and to know that I um, love them. My kids are spending the night with their grandmother. The first time I realized that mm, cannabis um, helped me was the was the first time I smoked it. It's been mm, three days uh, since I smoked. 
I am hoping to find something in Kansas City. I smoke to be the mother my children um, deserve because they're really um, cool kids. Drug use is an act of, of human misery. People take drugs to make themselves feel better or to escape. The genesis of the problem is in the consumer. And as long as there's consumption, there'll be a need for strict oversight. Because uh, without that, society certainly can perish. But for the DEA and for our partners, victory is one step at a time. When you look at it through the years, you realize that we have been victorious. And that pendulum of success is more on our side than their side. Okay, yesterday we were flying, um, flying over a ridge or a ridge line, end up being uh, at least 2,000 plants in this drainage, about three miles that way. They're all in rows underneath the brush. Uh, a couple thousand plants. We're gonna come in from the southwest. We're gonna go off a little uh, cul-de-sac off of residential housing like townhomes, small homes. Be quiet going in, no talking. You know, we see anything, hand signals. Pay attention to me going in. As usual, we want to make sure that they're not in there and be covert when we get in there. If we have to chase somebody, so we're gonna go and make the rest and chase them no matter how long. Secure that, and then come back. I lied. It's not 2,000 plants. It's going to be like 10,000 plants. On December 16th, U.S. armed forces invade Panama and bring to an end the seven-year dictatorship of Manuel Antonio Noriega. I got into infantry, and I really loved it. I was in battle. Probably the, the hottest situation um, was the capturing of Noriega in Panama. The Marines went in, we were fire support, and it was just brutal. Nine men lost that day. It's something that you don't want to witness. It's just, it's horrible. That is part of my post-traumatic stress. Uh, 
pressure washer contractor. I basically wash commercial and residential and industrial buildings. Make everything clean. I suffered some very horrible post-traumatic stress as a child. When I was seven, I had a very traumatic incident happen to me. Me and my sister actually in a restaurant down off DeSoto Avenue in LA, California. My dad was a mob investigator for the LA County Sheriff's Department. And my mom worked as a secretary for Litton Industries. My mom and my dad had been separated partially because my father had a bad pill and alcohol problem. So we got together to kind of discuss the divorce and also me and my sister have birthdays that are close so we figured we'd celebrate me and my sister's birthday and my parents would talk about the divorce so we got together in this restaurant. When my dad got off duty, popped a bunch of pills, met us at the restaurant, um, an argument ensued. He stood up no hesitation, pulled out his service revolver, stuck it right on her forehead, and that was the last anybody was to see of her head. Her head ended up all over me and my sister. Um, the body just basically collapsed on me and I just went empty. I was like a balloon, I deflated. My post-traumatic stress is horrible. I, I have had a horrible life. The saving factor was that I found pot. It saved me, saved my life. My nightmares were gone. I had no recollection of any vivid details of a lot of the horrible trauma I've suffered in my life. And it wasn't brain surgery, I knew it was the pot. You go off your medicine for a year, you're gonna have some serious complications. And there was from me going off it a year. It was all of a sudden I'm off my post-traumatic stress medicine and I totally went depressive. I totally went in the shell. I totally wanted to not be a living entity on this earth. I got consumed that much. I like those choices that California gives me. That I'm able to take the medicine I want to take. It's totally an incredible feeling to go to a pharmacy that prescribes marijuana to a patient for what ails you. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, how are you doing? They aren't pharmacies as most people know them. They're basically a pharmacy that just deals in marijuana products, i.e. hash, hash oil, edibles, and smokables. How you doing? Good, artist. The one that I prefer to go, which is Horta Farm in Santa Barbara, California, is very professionally ran. It's the Starbucks of the marijuana pharmacies. Uh, you're looking for indicas, right? For your... I'd like to look for something, uh, maybe a sativa for in the morning oh, okay. to get me going, uh, a little bit of an up uh, energy. Well, I'll tell you what, for sativas right now, what I'm using you know, during the day to kind of stay a little bit more clear-headed is this uh, Super Silver Haze. And that's a uh, dominant sativa? Yeah, that's a uh, sativa dominant hybrid. Oh, very nice. Very fragrant with a little bit of a fruit. And this is Ooh, a pretty good batch. This is very, very the. People are starting to see more and more how effective and viable cannabis is as a treatment option for their various illnesses. I think that a lot of dispensaries are going to be popping up all over the country. Well, I would like to try a little of the Bubba Kush okay. uh, for the evening, and uh, I think I'd prefer like a little of the Super Silver Haze for the morning. Okay, great. The EA doesn't like these word dispensaries, uh, and and but for for whatever that's the word that's attached to it. But the fact of the matter is, they're marijuana, they're marijuana distribution centers. It's essentially what they are. And they are public nuisance. All right, Josh. Thank you, sir. Hey. What right. we've been able to determine in our dispensary Thanks. investigations, these are not people coming out in wheelchairs, on crutches. These are not people that, that meet the, you know, the dying, the sick, and the injured.
those are not the type of individuals that are going into dispensaries and that are coming out of dispensaries with the marijuana. We know a lot more about marijuana uh, than we did uh, 30 uh, years ago. Uh, we know uh, we know that it savages short-term memory, it affects ability to concentrate, it affects motor skills, and now we have brain imaging which shows that it affects the developing brain, which is why the National Institute of Drug Abuse has so much concern about it. This stuff is dangerous. It is something that can really affect your life permanently. There are hundreds of thousands of Americans, maybe more, for whom marijuana is a medicine, nothing more, nothing less. And the notion that those people should be criminalized, that those people should be denied legal access to a, an effective medication, uh, especially a medication which has such an incredibly high safety margin relative to, relative to so many legal drugs, that's morally offensive. The other side of the marijuana issue, they're sort of forced into arguing that marijuana is really okay in the same way that I'm forced into the idea of saying no marijuana is terrible. Uh, because this, uh, this uh, bumper sticker mentality in the public debate, which wants to see things as black or white, when they really aren't black or white, they're more complicated than that. My ex-mother-in-law, she actually came with me to the head shop today <laughs> to buy the pipe. I'd love to see what he's got in there. I've never been in the place. Yeah, uh, you've been by it, but... Uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he's got inside there. Yeah. What's your experiences with marijuana over the years? Have you ever come across it? Have you ever... Uh, had it my often? son had it. <laughs> and, and did you find <laughs> your him... Your ex-husband had it Did you find him home. using it, or you found no, it in the room? I found it in the house, and I threw it out on him. <laughs> 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 see it? Yep. Ethnic concepts, yep. okay. right here. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Oh my God. My legs are it today. Oh, it smells good. It smells nice right. in here. Doesn't it? Mm. Actually, I should get some insects and stuff. Wow. A t-shirt and everything. Neat. I was amazed by all the different pipes and things that they have. Hello. I have to sit. I had spoken to other people, gotten advice on what's the best, because I don't know, you know, what works good. So I've heard that a glass pipe burns well. Are these glass pipes? They're all glass pipes. Oh, they're all glass, okay. Yeah, I'm right, like 18 to 30 in this case. Okay. Yeah. There's red. Yeah. Thank you. That's cute. Okay. Oh, yes. That's good. That's that right. was a cute one. They're all glass. They were all glass. Right? Yeah. That was Bigger. a nice one. Yeah. That it's one very pretty. Probably the pretty. deepest on the show. <laughs> Can you explain to me how to use it? <laughs> now that I've picked out a pretty one and a pouch. This is a card, and you put your finger over the card with your thumb. What's it called? A carburetor? Oh, carburetor. Okay. So you're going to hold that, you're yep. going to light it, mm -hmm. and then you let it go to release the smoke into your mouth. Oh, so you don't have to inhale, basically. Yeah, you do oh, inhale. Okay. You inhale the whole time. I have to light it. Okay. And then, you, and then it'll clear out. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah, Very you helpful. too. My goodness, there's still a lot good. of stuff, huh? Jeez. Basically, this garden's a lot bigger than we expected. This grove is probably 600 yards wide and uh, 80 yards long. In another month, when these things triple in size, all of them are going to be touching. It's going to look like a giant lawn. The plants are just now starting to mature. But you're actually starting to see some of the little buds or flowers starting to form. Each one has their own water line. Thank you.
it is an ambitious undertaking to come and put this many plants this close to civilization and figure they're going to get away with it. If we go low and we say that there's 5,000 plants here, it's a lot of money. Well, there's always going to be drug users. If there's a drug user, they're going to find a way in this open, free society of ours to get drugs into the country, to grow drugs in these remote areas, until which time the good guys come. That's the DEA and all our state, local, and federal partners, people like Steve Reed, find these drugs, find these marijuana plantations, and destroy them. And this is an amazing plant. That's a seven, eight-foot plant. The war on drugs is a wonderful symbol. And it's been around so much, it all it's really one word now, war on drugs. There's always been that thing. Look at that puppy. Beautiful plant. So much of life is based on random continuances from the past. Like there are these um, jugs in Cyprus, and you can see the men building them, and, and they have these blobs on them. Just these blobs. And you ask, well, you know, Vasiliki, why are you putting those blobs on? And he says, well, you know, that's just the way we've always done it. It turns out that if you excavate in this area, the blobs used to be female breasts. It used to be a woman. And then gradually over the years, there's a kind of a shorthand, and now it's just blobs. They don't know why they do it. It started out with a meaning, and then you have the blobs. And in the same way, the war on drugs is based on a lot of that sort of thing. Whatever attack, whatever you want. We always drag along the baggage of history to the point that we don't even know that it's baggage. And those are the kinds of policies that can be the hardest to get rid of because they seem normal. have to work within the system. That's how everything gets done. It's no joke that laws and sausages being made is something you don't want to look at, and it takes somebody on the inside to actually change it. You have to be on the inside. You have to be talking to these guys. If you could just uh, keep C-SPAN on all day in the background and just tip these Today on. is the big day. Today is the, the day of the Hinchy vote. I, I have a good feeling about today. I have, I have a good gut feeling. And then... My plan for today is to try to keep my head on straight and to uh, try to uh, not get too discombobulated as I'm running all over the hill. Yeah, I'm going to try to ambush some congressmen. Hey. Congressman, I was wondering if you're thinking about voting in favor of the Hinchy Robacher medical marijuana amendment today. You know, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Okay. I'm going to be um, talking to my staff when I get back. Any any information I can provide that might might help change you guys' mind, or yeah. is there anything that would change your mind, sir, that you can think of? Uh, nothing right now. But, yeah. But I'll try to keep an open mind. Well, I appreciate it, sir. I got to call you back. Hold on, Congressman Franks. Hey, Aaron Houston with the Marijuana Policy Project. How are you, sir? Wait, you? Marijuana Policy Project. Nice to meet you. I, I'm, I'm curious, sir. Have you thought about your position on the medical marijuana amendment at all? Do you think you might vote in favor of it today? Sure. I don't think you, you don't think you will? Yeah. Thanks, Congressman. And I, I guess my final appeal to you would be, uh, Congressman Issa, uh, I'm Aaron Houston with the Marijuana Policy Project. Yes. Wanted to ask you, sir, if there's any chance you'd take a states' rights position on the hinchy warbacher amendment coming up today on the uh, SSJC bill. Bye. Bye. Lose. Lost Larson. Uh, we've got Alex Holstein out in California. I think they've talked to your office. Wonderful, but uh, I haven't made my mind. All right. Thanks, Congressman. Uh, there was something with uh, Culberson. What happened there? Yeah. No. Right now, I'm heading to see Mark Satter and see if we can have a little chat with him. Mark Satter is a foaming at the mouth, wildly uh, prohibitionist congressman uh, from Indiana. My hope is to run into him and uh, to talk to him for a minute, maybe rattle him a little bit, throw him off his game before the big vote. Congressman Souter, Aaron Houston with the Marijuana Policy Project. How are you, sir? Congressman, is there any chance you'd ever change your position on medical marijuana? 
Is there any chance? I think it's medical marijuana, so I would never change that. Well, the Institute of Medicine, sir, says that there is. I mean, the Institute of Medicine... My oldest son, Danny, was diagnosed with acute lymphocytic leukemia in 1967, the year I started to look into marijuana. He had to get cancer chemotherapeutic drugs, which he just hated it because he'd vomit, he was nausea, he'd come home here, and uh, he'd lie for eight hours in a bed with a bucket. My wife said to me, shouldn't we get Danny some marijuana? And I said, no, we can't do that. It's against the law. My wife protested that I objected to that. And the next time he had therapy, I went into the treatment room, and they were laughing. They were having jokes. And she told me that Danny had smoked marijuana outside in the parking lot. It was just amazing to us. He not only didn't get nausea, he got off the table and he said, looked up at his mother and said, hey, can we stop for a sub sandwich on the way home? And from that time on until his death, he never had to deal with the nausea and vomiting. And I thought, my goodness, we've got to find a way to let people like my son and like these other people who have found this useful as a medicine, something which diminishes their suffering, we've got to find a way to make it available. for mm, cannabis. Why? To, because I hate the way mm, that I said mm, that I said that I said daughter mm, and it's the it's the most effective treatment that I've um, found. If I if I were to get busted. Uh, buying or smoking marijuana, there's a possibility mm, that I could lose my children. That it's worth that risk? I wouldn't be half the mother I am uh, without it because I would mm, just be in way too much uh, pain. So yeah, it being a, being a good mother mm, to my children mm, is the most important mm, thing in the world mm, to me. How much did he just give you? Not even a mm -hmm. 
I, I have enough for maybe I'm, I'm, I'm two bowls. And that will last me tonight and um, tomorrow morning. Why has marijuana not been approved medically? Because it's not medicine. It's been anecdotal evidence. Well, you know, I could take this glass and fill it with gin and drink some and say, hey, I feel good. And that's about what medical marijuana is. The four, five people that you, you've talked to, well, of course they're biased uh, toward it, but that's like asking the generals in Iraq, how's the war going? You know, you're not getting an objective forest for the trees kind of an appraisal from those people. You have to look at science, not politics, to define what is safe and effective medicine in America. I hope you catch that sound bite. That's, yeah, that's yeah. all right. I'm a little bit scared of of paranoia side effects. You know, you know, I've never denied this that I've smoked as a teenager. I've tried it before, so I know somewhat about um, marijuana, but it was 25 years ago or, or more. Um, and so I'm a little bit afraid of that, to be honest with you. Although I'm looking forward to the benefit, I'm a little, a little um, afraid of, you know, the paranoia or whatever. But we'll see. Bear with me because I really don't quite know what I'm doing. I'm going to try them. Uh, you know, again, I clarify and I go into this realistically, saying that I don't expect this to make me get up and walk miraculously. You know, it's not going to do that. Okay. I don't really know. I'm going to try. This is going to be... I don't want to waste anything. Okay. Now, put my finger on the carburetor. This is what the girl said to me. My mouth in here. And this thing. Holy schmoly. See that? I remembered from my teenage years that you hold it in for a little while. But wow. Okay. Okay, I did that one wrong, but it still worked. I forgot to take my finger off the carburetor. I know it's on the carburetor. <laughs> this is, you know, different. Yeah, there was more in there. Okay, now I'm gonna stop, only because I wanna see. <laughs> I don't wanna do too much. Okay. I'm not a smoker either. <clears throat> like cigarette smoker. So tell me what you're feeling right now. <sighs> mm. Wow, it doesn't take long. <laughs> No. Tell me what you're feeling. Okay, well, first of all, it was irritating here because I'm not a smoker, but what I'm feeling physically, it's weird. Um, not bad. My legs just feel a little, I don't want to say looser, perhaps. I, that's why I just said it doesn't take long. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how this works. Um, I, it almost feels like now, a lot of times I have stiffness and burning pain in my legs and feet. And it, it just feel I can't even say, I still feel like a, a warmth, but it's not the burning pain, I call it burning pain, that I normally feel. It's like a, a warmth. It's, it's not irritating. It's almost soothing, I Go, guess. Going through your legs? Yep. Under here and down to here. It just feels almost like a coolness compared to the burning pain. It's, you know, is this I'm a new, scared. Is this a new sensation? Yeah. You um, never felt this before? I, I never did. But, and it's and been I how feel... Long, it's been how long since you just smoked the marijuana? 
Oh gosh. <laughs> a minute? Um, yeah. Two minutes? Two minutes. It works fast. <laughs> I don't know how long it lasts. But uh, it's, it's finally come to the fruition, you know, the end of the road here, that I can actually do this legally in my own home in the state of Rhode Island, um, barring the feds coming, bar knocking down the door, um, I'm legal. Count each individual plant, cut them below the stalks, down below, uh, right at the dirt line, and we'll be fine. We're gonna be out here for a while. The marijuana here will be seized basically as evidence uh, taken to uh, DEA's headquarters, processed and then placed in a secured lock facility until it can uh, be destroyed at the appropriate time and place. This is opening. There's our campsite. Uh, this may be all that they've left behind. But you've got uh, equipment to s facilitate the grow itself, including the drip irrigation that we've seen all through the grow. And you've got a number of uh, packages of uh, miracle Grow plant food, all-purpose plant food. It's possible the growers could come back. There's probably very little chance at this point to catch them. They're going to know that we were in this garden, so it's very little chance that they're going to come back. Flour tortillas, lettuce, this hasn't been there very long, that's still cold, still fresh. Pork cracklings or chicharronas, la morena pickled jalapeno peppers, beans, rice, more beans. Educated guests would say this is a Hispanic grow. After about the third hit is when I began to feel the tension um, dissipate. Oh. It really helps my speech. I feel much calmer, much less rushed. And I feel like I can control the muscles that I couldn't control before I smoked. It's kind of nice. I don't make as many funny faces. <laughs> If we just threw the marijuana laws off the books and said let's concentrate on cocaine, methamphetamine, and any other any type of drug, because there's a recognition that marijuana is, is not the way to go. It's it's not the, it's not harmful. Uh, it has medicinal purposes. If if that was if that was acknowledged in this country today, I think it would have a, a devastating impact. Certainly, it's possible that the nine-year-old occasionally might get stoned, and that that would be more likely than it has been until now. But the problem is that we have to weigh what kind of damage we want to tolerate. And for me, an America where there was a certain danger that people might experience drugs who don't under the current regime would be preferable to one where drugs are criminalized because the problem is that once you criminalize drugs, then you create an underground economy where drugs command a much greater price than they would otherwise because of the danger, the illegality in handling them and selling them. And 
And as a result, you have certain communities that are vulnerable to ending up depending on that particular economy. I think the real difference is that during the, 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 the 1920s and early 30s, when, uh, when Americans started talking about repealing alcohol prohibition, most of them could still remember what it was like when alcohol was legal. It was, they could imagine it. The problem we have today is that none of us have grown up in a world in which marijuana was legal, was regulated, was sold in shops and taxed. So the change is more difficult to make because we can't picture it, we can't imagine it. And in some respects, I think it's that lack of imagination of the fact that this really, we could just make it legal and the world would not crumble. Radio come to order. I don't know any thinking person in Washington, D.C. who thinks this should go on. This insane campaign against marijuana. You never meet anyone who's actually in favor of it. But everybody thinks it has to go on because they think everyone else wants it to. In the end, the absurdity of this will tell. The spell will be broken. I think they might be voting right now. They're voting right now. If we could find a politician who had the initially the guts, but most important, the intelligence to see that this is the case and make it a subject, it would immediately become the next big thing. And we would shake ourselves and wonder how and why it had taken us so long to see where our own best interests lay. Amendment offered by Mr. Hinchy of New York. This amendment simply has to do with the ability of states to relieve the suffering of their citizens without federal intervention and the right of states to pass laws regulating medical practice without federal intervention. That Balance of my side. That was good. Mr. Chairman, I rise today in strong opposition to the Hinchy Amendment. Let's be clear, marijuana is not harmless as some claim. And the message we're sending to our children today is very strong. Whether we support legal use of marijuana as a precursor to methamphetamines, to heroin, this is the message we'll be sending if we approve this. I strongly urge my colleagues to vote against this amendment. I rise in strong support of the amendment. Our coalition of freedom-minded Republicans and Democrats on this issue is based on compassion for those who are suffering, a commitment to personal liberty, and a firm belief in the principles of federalism. Nice. Great. If I am terminally ill, it isn't anybody's business on this floor how I handle the pain or the illness that is, or the sickness associated with that illness. I rise to oppose this amendment. <clears throat> I had young people work for me in my supermarket who I knew were using marijuana and they used it for a period of years, folks, and they're not as sharp after years of marijuana use as they would have been. It dulls the brain. It, it holds back the growth. I have close friends and even relatives who are living less of a life than they would have if they hadn't spent years abusing marijuana. Marijuana is a dangerous drug that is not adequately respected by the young people of this country because they've been seduced by leaders in this country advocating that it's a perfect, wonderful drug. Gentlemen's time has expired. Mr. Chairman, the arguments that have been put forth against this amendment have nothing to do with this amendment. This amendment has nothing to do with legalizing marijuana. It has to do with two simple things being compassionate for people under the lawful provisions of laws passed in their states and the state's rights. This Congress should recognize states' rights, live up to the provisions of the Constitution, and pass this amendment. A sufficient number has risen and a recorded vote is ordered, and members will record their votes. It's the end of a long road here. Um, feeling pretty good. I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. This is going to be the longest 10 minutes of my life, man. <laughs> Here's Johnny. The plants are way too many, too uh, vast, too large to be able to hand carry these out. It would take us all day. 
This is one of the few gardens that uh, we'll use the helicopter this summer to sling it out. We're probably going to have 50 bundles. What happened, man? You're looking at uh, 20 guys out here, 20 guys and probably of those, 10 are out there every week or three times a week. This isn't all Miami Vice. This isn't Tubbs and Crockett, you know, in silk shirts driving a Pantera or something. This is a bunch of hardworking cops making, you know, an okay living. It's not a great living, not a great wage, but out here working their tails off to make a difference for the public. Point. Rough count, 17,000. The tally right now is only 26 yay to 37 uh, nay, so it's really hard to characterize the vote at this point. We only have 16 Dems voting no at this point. Four Republicans, man. It's creeping up. Whoa. Huh. Yeah, somebody changed. There's Debbie Wasser Michelle. She's about to vote against us. Did we just lose a Dem or was that a Republican? This is scary. Yeah. This is starting to scare me. Don't close it yet. Come on, guys. On this vote, the yeas are 163, the nays are 259, the amendment is not agreed to. The committee will come to order. It's a great day. It's the biggest day of the year. The DEA marijuana eradication completed another successful mission. Took 20,000 marijuana plants off the street. A lot of pot, a whole lot of pot. We hurt somebody today. Wow, well, I got 163 yes votes. I would have wanted more votes, but it is an election year, so I think I was being really optimistic. Still a resounding defeat, though. It's a resounding defeat, but this is how it works. You know, you gain ground and you hold it. And uh, you try to, try to gain a little bit more ground. And we did gain some ground with Republicans. I'm impressed that we got, uh, I think, 18 Republicans voting in favor of the amendment in an election year. It's not bad. Are you spinning? I am kind of spinning. It's an awesome feeling. Do a good job. No one gets hurt. We go home safe. We take 20,000 plants with us. Tomorrow I'm going to wake up. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I'll wake up and uh, uh, get back to it, get back to the work at hand. We're not going to give up. We're, we're, we're not going to give up. We're going to win eventually. Tomorrow we get up and do the same thing. 20,000 plants is an awesome day. It's 20,000 plants off the street, out of the kids' hands. You know, police officers one, crook zero. Hey, half the war on drugs for the bad stuff, the heavy stuff, the heroin, whatever, I don't care. But marijuana, it just seems so silly to be illegal at the federal level. It works. If people say it works and it helps them, why would you want to deny, deny them that? Some people with cancer, are they're dying. Um, why are you going to make them suffer needlessly? I fly the flag every day. I'm a patriot. I just want America to drop the stigma, to look at me. I'm hardworking, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, I'm a businessman, I'm successful, and who am I hurting? 
Who am I hurting? This is not the hysteria people make it out to be. It's people like myself, it's people older than us, it's younger people that need it medically, that are going through chemotherapy or whatever. Yeah, it's everybody in the population now. It's, it's, it's reaching all parts of society. We're the faces of the patient. We're the people that are suffering, that need this medicine. I'm the fortunate one that has the medicine. The person standing beside me or behind me is not that fortunate. That's what we've got to change. It's just not fair to be made a criminal to get that medicine. I have such a wonderful life right now. Even with my struggles, even with being terrified that I'm going to lose my children. I've got the four most fantastic children in the entire freaking world. So, I feel very uh, blessed. <laughs>